In this episode of Idea City, the woman is talking. She's saying, I hope we can still be cousins. That's another one that for some reason ran in a fancy pants literary magazine. Also featured in this episode. The gun thing makes, me, makes us all nervous too when we're negotiating with the United States. We like these people, but when you know, negotiate the free trade deal, you know, a little higher run, you know. Idea City. Ideas change the world. Matthew Diffie, who comes to us from the hollowed mecca of cartooning, which is the New Yorker. And uh, personally, I hope he shows us some of the rejected cartoons, the salon de refusé of cartoons. Matthew, where are you? All right. Good morning. Um, I had sort of an urge to say something significant and important because um, I've been so inspired, but it passed. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to show you some cartoons and talk a little bit about what I do, assuming that even though it's boring to me, it might be of interest to you. So I start with a blank slide just because that's what I start with every day. All right, here's a drawing. Um, it's not quite a cartoon until you go to the caption, which is sumo on ice. <laughs> These are a few of my accepted cartoons that ran in the New Yorker magazine. I'll talk more about the rejected ones. Let's just go through some of these. Caveman gag, perennial favorite. He's saying, is this the spatula or the whisk? <laughs> Maynard Wilson, the bull whisperer. <laughs> If I had time, I would, you know, wax eloquent about the drawings and the composition, but I don't think anyone really cares. Uh, this is one of my favorite drawings. The guy is talking to the, the man, he's an interviewee, he's saying, so Jim, where do you see yourself in 10 minutes? <laughs> we live in fast times. This is one of my personal favorites, and it's just ridiculous, but a couple of ducks on the doorstep. One of the ducks is saying, have you ever thought about becoming a duck? Um, some of you might be able to relate to this. It's a, a couple of detectives examining a body. They're saying, from the violent nature of the multiple stab wounds, I'd say our victim is probably a consultant. A um, couple of old people. I, I find old people talking naughty, very funny. Uh, again, uh, if I do say so myself, fabulous drawing. Uh, I say that because they don't always work out that way, but I like the composition, the way this leads over to, there's a nice, that, that makes her look even wider. <laughs> that link between the light switch and the corner of that. It's a 5B, 6B pencil, in case there's any. Smooth Bristol board. All right, she's talking. She's saying, Wilford, or sorry, Wilford, did you leave the lid off the body glitter? <laughs> it's a little disturbing. Uh, the dad is talking. He's saying, uh, before we begin this family meeting, how about we go around and say our names and a little bit about ourselves? <laughs> He's a, uh, yeah. This is Leon's Auto Salvage and Center for Interpretive Dance. I grew up in Texas, and this is a true story. Okay, a couple of uh, police dogs talking, as they do. Um, one of them saying, I'm starting to really like the smell of cocaine. <laughs> this is one that the New Yorker accepted, um, surprisingly. Uh, Three guys stealing. <laughs> this is sort of a slow burn. <laughs> this is uh, my mother's favorite cartoon of mine. Uh, interesting story, I submitted this five times over the course of about three years before they bought it. 
I kept thinking, oh, that was pretty good. And mom said, no, it's really good. And so I kept sending it back. Um, this is another one. This has a caption, actually. He's saying, I was in a different place then. Let's see. Uh, the Vesperados. I don't really know how many of these I have. Uh, this is another one that's sort of about Texas, where I grew up. Um, it's a breakup cartoon, if there's such a thing as a genre. Uh, the woman is talking, she's saying, I hope we can still be cousins. <laughs> that's another one that for some reason ran in a fancy pants literary magazine. Uh, and this is the last one. Just yeah. When we come back, so we call these Canada geese in America. Do you guys just call them geese, or is it Canada? I don't know. Get the latest idealist news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.ideacityonline.com. Idea City. Ideas change the world. Ten reasons why my cartoons get rejected from The New Yorker. If there's any aspiring cartoonists out there, this is what not to do if you want to get accepted. So I'm going to show you or tell you a reason, and then I'm going to show you a cartoon of my own that illustrates that. Reason number one, too low brow. Saying, please do not feed the animals chili. And yes, it's a farting elephant gag. <laughs> Even if you call it a flatulent pachyderm gag, it's still a farting elephant gag. And the New Yorker's not going to buy a gag like that. Reason two, uh, too politically incorrect. Some Indians, Native Americans. <laughs> yeah. The guy's war paint says, go Indians. I don't think it's anti-Indian. Perhaps it is. No, um, I think it's, it, it's more about people that paint their faces at ball games. Aren't those guys crazy? All right, moving on. Boy, you guys are sensitive. That got, that got, <laughs> that got cold really fast. I've shown it to some Native Americans and they think it's funny. So don't worry. Reason three is too dark. And by too dark, I mean cartoons about disease or death or bad things happening to Adam, animals or children. So this is one, it's a children's birthday party. She's saying, come on in, the kids are in the backyard bobbing for pink eye. <laughs> it's not gonna go in the New Yorker probably. Reason number four, just too weird. It's just too weird. Sometimes you come up with weird things. I do it a lot. Uh, wait, there's more. Um, so one of the heads of the two-headed kid is talking. He's saying, kids at school call us eight eyes. I told you it's weird. Because I have so many weird ones, I'm going to show you another weird one. A woman saying, she's a wiener cat. <laughs> okay, reason five is too political. The New Yorker doesn't really do political cartoons. Um, these other guys have it covered in newspapers and such. The New Yorker will do a cartoon that's vaguely about politics, but not something that has Bush in it or uh, you know, any of the actual candidates. Very rarely. So I, don't, I just don't do them. Um, cuts down on my reading time, too. Uh, reason number six is they're too difficult to get. And when you do get it, it isn't funny enough to justify the effort. Oh, was there something more? No. Sometimes you think it's perfectly clear, but it's a balance between hiding the joke so that the audience discovers it on their own and feels sort of good and spelling it out too much. And some ideas you just can't make work. So this is one of those ones. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but... <laughs> well, maybe it doesn't need a caption. I don't know, but... Usually when I show this without that sort of setup of like, smart crowds get this, but dumb crowds don't. People don't actually put it together that that's a, a Nike symbol. Um, anyway, I have a couple of, see this is, we were talking about this, we call these Canada geese in America. Do you guys just call them geese? <laughs> or is it Canada? I don't know. So anyway, one of the, the geese is saying sellouts, which is a little anticlimactic. <laughs> You can probably see that my first love in life, I wanted to be a wildlife artist. Do you guys know Robert Bateman? He, oh, okay, good. He's one of your national treasures. I wanted to be Robert Bateman. I studied with him for one day at the Smithsonian Institute when I was in high school. 
really changed my life, I'm serious. But you can see it in the, I like to think. Reason seven, just too dumb. You know, sometimes when you sit at the drawing table trying to come up with clever little gems of sophisticated wit, the thing that actually makes you laugh the most is just something stupid. And uh, so I do a lot of those. Here's one of them. Horse-drawn carriage. <laughs> Am I blocking you guys? Pretty dumb. And yet, one of my favorites. All right, reason eight is ju they're just bad, bad ideas. And so I have the boldness here to show you what I consider one of my worst cartoon ideas ever. And you'll notice this is a rough sketch. I didn't even bother doing a finished drawing. This is what the roughs look like when I pitched them. I'll show you by comparison what the... Well, that's not a good... <laughs> All right, so that's what a you know, finished drawing would look like. And if, they're not, if I don't, yeah, to pitch them. So anyway, the caption is, it's from my Swiss account. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very sorry that this is being videotaped. Okay, reason number nine, too dirty. There's a lot of these in the rejection book. A uh, man is talking, he's saying, you say sex pervert, I say horse enthusiast. <laughs> I know, I know. So I guess this is my last one. Reason 10, all of the above. Um, it's balloon genitals, five dollars. <laughs> There's bad things happening to children. It's weird and it's dumb. So thank you very much. Thank you, Terry, for having me and thank you. I was, I was a little late coming out because I was busy laughing my face. Get the latest Idealist news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.ideacityonline.com.